Morning guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to try to answer the question of whether or not you really need to get a teleconverter for your Canon RF lens system. And I assume you know what a teleconverter is, aka extender, but real quickly, you attach it to your camera or lens, and it goes between your lens and your camera, and it extends the focal length of your lens. For example, Canon makes a 2.0x teleconverter. If I put that on my 500 millimeter lens, it extends the reach of that lens out to a thousand millimeters. If I put it on my 800 millimeter, it extends the reach out to 1600 millimeters. So pretty cool for, especially for bird photography, because it's hard to get close to birds sometimes, and they're small. Um, so, but the question is now, uh, I shoot with a Canon EOS R5, which has 45 megapixels. That's a lot of megapixels. So my question has been, what if I just leave off the teleconverters and I just crop heavily in post? Uh, meaning when I get into Lightroom, I can crop like crazy. Is that going to mess up the image quality? Or is it better to shoot with a teleconverter? Or vice versa, does using a teleconverter decrease your image quality? And so I've heard, uh, usually you hear that the teleconverters do decrease image quality, but I've never seen a video comparing them side by side. So that's what we're going to do today. How are we going to make this happen? Well, we're going to go find some birds of prey, specifically red-tailed hawks. Um, I know a park, Joseph Grant Regional Park, where there's a lot of red-tailed hawks. They like to hang out in the morning. They get lazy, and I can get pretty close to them. So I'm going to go try to find some. We're packing up all my, my two lenses, my 800 millimeter and my 100 to 500, as well as the 1.4 and the 2.0 teleconverters, packing them all up, going to find a red-tailed hawk, setting up my tripod, and we're going to shoot these birds with all the different lens teleconverter combinations. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to bring those images back to my studio and process them raw, and we're going to have a shootout and see who's sharper, with the teleconverter or without the teleconverter. So that's the plan. Let's get going. All right, let me set the stage here for this first encounter. So I'm pulling in the parking lot of Joseph Grant Regional Park. I see a red-tailed hawk sitting up in the tree. I know this hawk. He sits there a long time in the morning. So I get out my rangefinder. I position my car so I'm 70 yards away from the red-tailed hawk. And the plan now is hopefully he'll sit. We're going to go through all these lens teleconverter tele combinations. Hopefully not too many people will bother us. And uh, we'll see if we can get them. Now, the only problem with this is it's a little early. The sun hasn't come up over the mountains. Um, I can see the sun hitting the, the west side mountains, but it hasn't peeked over to light my bird up yet. So I'm going to shoot the bird anyway in this just pre-sunlight period, and then we'll wait till the sun hits the bird and shoot the bird again, going through all the lens teleconverter combinations. That's the plan. Here we go. All right, just like yesterday. Exactly 70 yards away, I don't know if you can see him or not. There's a, our same old red-tailed hawk. Usually pretty good at sitting, so let's, from 70 yards, let's do our lens experiment since I have my car sitting right here. All right, here we go. 500 millimeter. One point four teleconverter. Okay, we got the two two times teleconverter on right now.
Okay, I got the 2.0 teleconverter on. Okay, well that was, uh, we got part of the experiment done. So I got, went through all the lens combinations as you saw, and uh, the lens teleconverter combinations, waiting for the sun to hit the bird. We could tell the bird was getting a little nervous on the very last, uh, the last lens teleconverter combination. The reason the bird was getting nervous, bald eagles came in. So the female bald eagle came in scared the red-tailed hawk off the same perch so she perched there and a, just a minute later here comes the male the male bald eagle to also land on that perch so um, I'll trade that any day landing eagles uh, for my experiment can't pass it up so I'll put some of those pictures up right now uh, of these eagles I got a video of them leaving as well scared away by a jogger who's uh, coming down the road coming up the trail underneath them so here's those Here's those pictures. Female took off first. Somebody's running. Here goes the male. Okay, let's set the stage now for the second encounter with another red-tailed hawk. I can see another red-tailed hawk. Uh, there's a fence that's about 45 yards away, and I think I can sneak up to the hawk. I know this hawk. He usually sits here all morning watching this field for mice or whatever to run through the field. So as long as no no dinner comes up, we should be good. So let's sneak down there and see if we can repeat this experiment. Okay, red-tailed hawk behind me. He looks pretty stable. So let's see if we can go through these lenses. Yeah, awesome. So let's head back. Can't wait to go look at the results of today and yesterday. We've got multiple examples of multiple different types of birds shooting the 800 and 100 to 500, all with kind of naked without anything, all with the 1.4 teleconverter and all with the 2.0 teleconverter. So it should be pretty interesting. All right, see you guys later. All right, let's get back to the studio with all these images. Um, I've probably already put some of the images in after the, the shooting, but now we're going to actually put them up side by side so we can really do the comparison part of this video. So let's see if you can pick out which, which images used a teleconverter and which images didn't use a teleconverter. They're all cropped to the same size. So here we go.
Okay, we're back in the studio. Let me put this little blurb in here, this little recap in here for people who just jump to conclusions. Uh, if you already know this, you can jump to the real conclusion section, but this is just a recap of what we did. So uh, this video was shot on the EOS R5, which is a 45 megapixel camera. And we were trying to answer the question of, do you need a teleconverter to shoot birds at a long distance anymore? Because 45 megapixels, that's a lot of megapixels uh, to crop with in Lightroom. And I'm thinking that I can crop like crazy and don't even need these anymore. I used to use these all the time. Also, with regard to the lenses, when I say 500 millimeters, I'm talking about the RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens. I sh always shot it at full at 500 millimeters, so I'm just going to say 500 millimeters. When I say 800 millimeters, I'm talking about the 800 millimeter prime. When I say 700 millimeters, I'm talking about the 100 to 500 shot all the way up to 500 with the addition of a 1.4 millimeter teleconverter that gives us focal length of 700. If I say with the 1,000 millimeters, we're talking about the 100 to 500 with 2.0x teleconverter, which doubles the focal length out to 1,000 millimeters. Right? If I say 1,600 millimeters, I'm talking about putting this on the RF 800 millimeter prime, doubles the focal length to 1,600 millimeters. Okay, with that said, let's get to the conclusions. All right, so what are the conclusions of this experiment? Uh, one pretty solid conclusion is this 2.0x teleconverter did not do very well, no matter what lens I put it on, no matter what distance. And to, and I can hear some of you thinking, well, this 2.0 is really made for birds that are really far away, like 200 yards away. I did do another experiment. I didn't put it in this video because I had inconsistent light. We had a cloudy, partially cloudy day. Uh, but I did find bald eagle sitting at 230 yards away where I ran through all the different lens televerter combinations. And just to give you an idea of cropping, so here is a crop of that 230 yard bald eagle with the 500 millimeter. See, massive crop, probably a 98% crop, ridiculous crop to get a good size picture of the bird versus a 1600 millimeter crop, which is not nearly as great. And you would think that, oh, you just can't crop that much. You're going to ruin the quality of the images. And clearly, the 1600 millimeter is going to win that competition. But you tell me. I don't think it did. Um, both of the images don't look very good. Uh, but the 500 millimeter is sharper. If I ran this through a denoise program, it would, it would probably clean up okay. You could post it on Facebook. Um, so this just did, bottom line, this 2.0 teleconverter, I think it's a waste of money if you have a high megapixel camera. Now, what about the 1.4 teleconverter? So this raised the 500 to 700. It raised the 800 to 1120 millimeters. I would, and this used to be my go-to lens, I would put this on when the sun came out and I would shoot normally at 700 millimeters. Most of my photography is done at 700 millimeters. I'm going to tell you after this experiment, I'm not using this anymore. At the first experiment at, in the parking lot at 70 yards, I would, would have thought this would have just blown the 500 away, but it didn't. In fact, the 500 was actually a tiny bit sharper than the, than the 700 millimeter. Uh, and again, 500 plus this teleconverter, it gives us 700 millimeters. And I thought that would, that would just rule, and it didn't. Um, and uh, they were, at, at, at least they were similar in quality, but most people thought that the image quality was better just with a 500 millimeter. Now, what would happen if the sunlight actually hit the birds? I don't know. The results of that, unfortunately, the bald eagle came in. We do have some first light on the bald eagles from that shoot at 700 millimeters, and they look pretty darn sharp. Uh, would have the 500 milli, uh, millimeter shot beat that? I don't know, because the bald eagles flew away. Um, but if we go to the second shoot at 45 yards, uh, 
although this did very slightly win the competition. It beat the 500 by a hair. The eye was just a little bit sharper, but the feather detail was about the same. And remember that in that 45-yard shoot with perfect conditions, perfect sunlight, I did stop up to F10 on the 500 millimeter just so I could pair, can compare F10 at 500 millimeters to F10 at 700 millimeters. And I forgot to stop back down to F7.1. If I would have done that, I bet the 500 would have either tied or beat the 700 millimeter. So I'm pretty confident with that. I wish I would have um, remembered to do that, but I didn't. And it's hard to, to do the shoot. It's hard to get the bird to sit still for so long. So... Um, yeah, so I'm not going to use this anymore with my EOS R5. And I went out shooting today with it, and I got great pictures with it. I cropped more heavily than I used to, but they came out great. Um, also, we know that using a teleconverter, even the 1.4, it does slow down the autofocus just a hair. And birds in flight, I have a little bit more trouble shooting with a teleconverter compared to no teleconverter. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be going without this with my R5. Now, the question is, what about the R3, or the which has almost half the amount of megapixels? I don't know the answer to that story. You might need a teleconverter. A lot of wildlife photographers do use a 1.4 teleconverter on those lower megapixel cameras. But for the, the R5 at 45 megapixels, I think this is not needed. And one more thing, you might have thought, well, how come you're not talking about the 800 millimeter prime? Well, that's because it didn't have a very good day. It clearly is not as sharp as the 500 millimeter or the 100 to 500. But, you know, I shot at 500 the whole time. So it's not as sharp as the 500 millimeter. And um, that's, just, that's just the way it came out. I know a lot of people really like that lens. Uh, it's about a third of the price of the 100 to 500, right? It's about a thousand U.S. dollars. Uh, the 800 or the 100 to 500 is just a little under three thousand dollars. So I mean, I wouldn't expect it to be better than a three thousand dollar lens, um, and it wasn't in this experiment. All right, well that'll wrap it up. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've had similar experiences with these teleconverters. I'd especially like to know. I uh, hear from those of you who are shooting lower megapixel cameras, and maybe you do need a teleconverter in that case. I don't know. I'd like to repeat the experiment uh, with my R6 or with my uh, EOS R, which is a lower megapixel camera, and see if we get the same results. And finally, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and please consider subscribing. Really hard to start a YouTube channel these days because uh, the competition is fierce out there, and I really want to try to make this channel grow. So I'd appreciate it if you could consider subscribing as well. Okay, we'll see you in the next video.